Hello again, I am Blunty, and this is the Smartphone Cinema Mount. I reviewed it a little over a year ago, and I found it to be good. This, however, is the Cinema Mount 2, a ground-up redesign and refinement of the idea and features of the first model. It is designed for people like me, who use their smartphone's video capabilities for more ambitious projects than 17 second videos of their cat doing something cute. And it has been built with a uniquely clever system for accommodating smartphones of all sizes and lens locations. Big ones like my iPhone 6S Plus included, and indeed soon my new iPhone 7 Plus. Replacing the spring-loaded clamp from the older model, now your phone is held in place by a screw-adjusted clamp. The phone rests between two lipped rubber pads to keep it in place, and it does so very securely. Tension on this clamp is controlled by one of the two dials up top, which are doing their very best, alongside the pointless little red dot there, to do a rather clumsy cosplay of a Leica camera. <laughs> the other dial is not a screw adjustment, but a locking nut for the sliding rails that adjust for the length of your phone. The otherwise pleasant feeling materials and build quality are betrayed by a cheap looking sticker describing these knobs functions. One more small locking nut holds the sliding lens caddy in place. And between these three adjustments, you should be able to fit pretty much any and every camera phone out there. The body is made of that pleasant, velvety smooth, plasticky finish stuff. On the bottom, you've got the essential tripod mount, of course, metal as you'd hope, and with a rubber pad to protect the finish and to help with grip on the tripod mount plate. Up top, there's a cold shoe, though you can remove this and you'll find another standard quarter 20 screw mount there if if you want to attach other accessories to it, perhaps a magic arm or something for a little better control over an on-camera light or something. Once your phone is mounted securely and your lens adjusted into place, you're basically ready to shoot. On the left side of the back, the top and bottom parts locate via rails, but it doesn't actually secure into place, meaning that there's a very noticeable amount of play in the movement here. It's not something that compromises the use of the unit in any way, and it doesn't affect lens alignment or add any extra shake or anything like that, but it is an annoying flaw in an overall well-machined design. Opposite that, there's a cutout for the ports at the bottom of your phone. This works perfectly for my iPhone. Other phones with ports in different locations may, or may not, face issues depending on where those ports are. But it is not an unsurmountable issue. There's a channel cutout to help you route cables through. Also included is a short jack extension cable in case your choice of external microphone has a big chunky plug that won't fit through this little cutout. Rounding out the physical features is a pair of metal strap lugs and camera R do supply a basic nylon strap with quick release detachable ends. It's perfectly serviceable but not that great. Now, moving on to the all-important lens, it's one of those fairly generic 100-degree accessory lenses with a 37mm filter mount to screw onto the body. And like almost every example of this type of lens, you can screw it apart and reveal a close-up macro lens. A relatively common problem with this setup though being continual removing and reattaching of the front part of the lens to use the macro lens, over time you can inadvertently over tighten the fitting to the body and make the macro part of the lens incredibly hard to get off. I've hit this issue a few times myself despite how careful I am about it. To solve this, Camera R have rather pleasantly included a lens wrench in the box to give you the purchase and leverage you need to cope with this issue should it ever arise. Big thumbs up for that, first time I've seen this kind of thing included in the box and it is brilliant. Now you can of course also slide this lens out of the way completely and use your phone's native lens. In my case, with the iPhone 6S Plus, the positioning of all this meant I also had to remove the front wide angle lens element to avoid it intruding into my field of view of the iPhone's lens. But you know what? All of this is entirely pointless unless the lens is actually good enough to use. So let's see. Common issues with lenses like this we sometimes see are color aberrations, purple fringing at high contrast edges, softening of the image, especially at the edges, and in particular to wide angle accessory lenses, bowing and distortion at the edges of frame. Happily, this lens is all but free of all of these issues. The images I was getting during my test shoots were clean and sharp, the color was unaffected, contrast remained consistent, the iPhone had no issues with autofocus through the lens, and high contrast edges remained delightfully free of those hideous fringing and aberrations. The macro lens was equally pleasant. Now, with this kind of close-up macro lens, you're always going to need to get very, very close to your subject to actually get it in focus, and your depth of focus will always be very thin, so it can be particularly tricky to use, especially 
especially handheld, to keep your subject in focus and avoid the camera rig's own shadow from interfering with the shot. But as finicky as it can be to use one of these kinds of macro lenses, it is a feature I'm glad to have. The difference between the standard phone camera and using this wide angle lens can be seen clearly here, a useful boost in field of view. Of course, the other clear advantage in having a nice, crispy, wide-angle lens for your iPhone is it makes this stuff easier for those of us who like to spend time in front of the camera as well as behind. Not just for people like me, the YouTubers who need to do two camera pieces from time to time, but also you horrible, horrible narcissists out there who insist on taking 12 selfies a day. And just for the sake of comparison, this is the same shot without the wide-angle lens, so you can see how much more comfortable the framing is when it is wider. Because frankly, while the iPhone lens is a very, very good lens, it is slightly too tight for my tastes when it comes to this stuff, when you're just doing it handheld. And while frankly, this shouldn't be an issue for anyone actually using this case to its full potential at least, uh, the only problem with a case like this is the lens mount does in fact cover the front facing microphone that is underneath the lens on the back of the iPhone camera. Now, that means my audio may very well be muffled. I don't know, I haven't listened to this back yet, but like I said, anyone using this case to its full potential will be using an external mic anyway. I happen to recommend the Rode Video Micro because it is fantastic and great value and nice and compact so it doesn't sort of look really weird mounted on this thing or misbalance it or anything like that. In general, using this cinema mount 2 out in the world was a good experience. The extra grip space naturally led to getting steadier shots much easier, and with or without the strap, walking around with the camera in hand but at my side looking for the next shot felt much more confident. There's a much smaller chance of dropping my thin and when naked comparatively slippery smooth iPhone when it's in this case. Switching between wide angle to macro to raw iPhone lens was hindered a bit by the need to constantly screw on or off the lens and move the lens sled slider out of the way of course, but it didn't slow me down so much that it wasn't worth doing to get a nice variety of shots without risking missing too much. And finally, the matter of wide angle distortion at the frame edges. Well, this is actually handled better than I had expected. The bowing is present, but far less severe than you'd often find with accessory lenses like this, especially the smaller clip-on kind, they're terrible for it. But as you can see, it's not too bad at all, is it? Now also included in the box are two GND filters, aka graduated neutral density filters, one blue, one grey, and of course the filter adapter to mount the filters onto your lens. They are the square type, they are of decent but middling quality, and the filter mount is okay-ish. If you know what these are for, you already know if you need to bother with them at all. Personally, I never use them. They are, frankly, in my opinion, of very limited use with a camera phone, but those wanting to play around with landscape photography in particular will be pleased with their inclusion in the box, if only for the sake of experimenting with them. But all in all, a very nice accessory for smartphone shooters. At the time of this review, they're listing it at 85 yank bucks, which is an easy investment for something that will give you so much more flexibility, more accessory mounting options, and better control over your smartphone shooting if it is something you do very often, as indeed I do. And for those wondering how it'll cope with the iPhone 7 Plus's dual camera system, it should be fine. I mean, size is almost identical to the iPhone 6 Plus, so that won't be a problem. And the wide-angle lens will still align fine over the standard iPhone 7 Plus lens, and it would be a bit dumb to try and put it over the telephoto lens for what I hope should be obvious reasons. And of course, the lens sled can still slide out of the way when you do need the iPhone 7 Plus's secondary telephoto camera unobstructed. And the lightning to 3.5mm adapter that Apple give you still should fit in the accessory port just fine, so you can still use your, now old-fashioned, external microphones fine. So, thanks to Camera for throwing one of these at me to check out. It's not perfect, but it's damn useful. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.